So this past weekend, my wife and I had an amazing time on Sunday. We went to a local spot, black owned, had brunch, had some amazing Mexican at another spot. Not local, but still it was amazing. A good day of just shopping and chilling with each other. But the highlight of our day was we got to go to a comedy club and see Jason Banks. For those of you who don't know who Jason Banks is, Jason Banks is a comedian. Been killing it for about 15 years now until he came along on TikTok and completely shut it down. I mean, the dude's videos, he portrays a 10, I think he's like 10 years old, an 11 year old son named Derek. He also portrays his friends, one of them being a blind kid who thinks he can see. Jason Banks is hilarious. And if you ever want to see his work, please, if you ever get a chance to see his work, definitely go do that. Um, the reason why I brought that up is because I was in a room full of people laughing at some of the most inappropriate shit ever. And we all were there and we we understood the assignment. You know, these are just jokes and we shouldn't take any of this seriously. We shouldn't be getting offended. We're just here to have a good time. Now, I'm not saying that to have a good time, there must be things said that are inappropriate or that could possibly offend someone. All I'm saying is that if the intention is not malice and if we're just there to have a good time and these are clearly jokes, this is clearly a comedy show. Why are you getting mad? I think we just take things too seriously, too much. And I really believe the world could use a little bit of lightening up. You know, my favorite kind of person in the world is someone who takes what they do seriously, but not themselves. I think I'm one of those people. But yeah, we just got to learn to laugh at things, man. We're going to stress ourselves out to the point where we're going to give ourselves aneurysms and all kind of medical scares. And really, all we need to do is just laugh. Stop getting offended so much. Anyway, that's just me. Ladies and gentlemen, blurs and nerds, freaks and geeks, this is Do You Speak Geek, episode 90. What's going on, folks? It is your boy, Nixon. Welcome to Do You Speak Geek, the podcast where we give you all the latest reviews and news about everything in the geek and nerd realm. Thanks to everyone who listened to the previous episode and also any episodes. Thank you, avid listeners. And for any new listeners and subscribers, welcome to Do You Speak Geek. If you are listening to this podcast, you're probably listening on Spreaker. Shout out to Spreaker. That's the home team. And if not, we have several other outlets that you can listen to Do You Speak Geek. So wherever you get your podcast, please be sure to hit that Do You Speak Geek and subscribe. DoYouSpeakGeek.com, the central hub for everything DYSG. We got all kind of new things coming to the site. We're going to get a little bit of refreshing going on, if you will. Um, new picks, new videos, definitely blogs are coming and the merch is definitely there. So slide through and cop some merch. Do that right now on do you speak geek.com. Follow us on social media, Facebook at DYSGFB, Twitter at DYSG underscore tweets and Instagram at do you speak geek. The YouTube channel, the Donna and Daddy show, the only place you can find that. Please be sure to subscribe, like, Hulk, smash that bell for all notifications and leave comments. I and myself and Donna want to know what you guys think. All right, people, let's uh, hop into this show. Let's do what we do about this time. Y'all know what it is. Let's speak geek. Suit up. I want to be the very best. Talk nerdy to me. <laughs> All right, people, let's hop in these reviews at Rapid Fire. Boyfriend Dungeon. That was a fun spin on the dating sim formula, but it's a rogue-like parts that don't really mix well with the development of the, of the romances. Um, uncomfortably close to the antagonist being... It, it kind of dulls the game a little bit, too. So, I don't know. Check that out if you get the opportunity, too. 
Uh, I think this is called Shimigadon Season 1. Shimigadon has big talents and some bright moments, but this ode to old school musicals often comes off as slapping the face of their fans. But if you like comedy, it's definitely there for you. Heels season premiere. Uh, I've been waiting for this show for a minute. Stands is a great TV follow-up for Stephen Amell and the best dramatization of pro wrestling backstage drama to date. I can't think of any ones to, to compare it to, but that's a great comparison. The Walking Dead season 11 premiere opened up with uh, its final season. Kind of lackluster outing, some mid-card stories and some underwhelming cliffhangers. But, you know, Walking Dead has been on a trending downhill so far but we'll see what happens in the end titans season three premiere oh my god ooh, ooh, love this show an intriguing and twisty three episode premiere it will entertain fans new and old trust me you don't want to miss this don't breathe number two stephen lang returns as the menacing norman nordstrom uh predictable choices and a lack of character development makes this one a mediocre sequel but if you enjoy the first one you should somewhat enjoy the second one and finally respect Jay hud girl gave a oscar worthy performance as aretha franklin shows how heavy the queen of soul crown really was those are your reviews people please check those out when you get an opportunity to let's hop into my favorite portion of the show y'all know the vibes source wall man you come right out of a comic book behold the source wall can you read my son well that depends there is nothing wrong with reading a story and looking at the pictures. Enough said, Stan. Let's hop right into it. The pull list this week. Nightwing 83, my guy. It's a fight for the soul of the city. Now that Dick Grayson has inherited more money than he can possibly need, he has an idea of how he can help the city with it. And it's time for him to announce it to the world. But with Bloodhaven so beyond saving, what idea does he possibly have that could save it? Meanwhile, an unexpected figure comes into play with a plan to buy the city and all the power that goes with it from Blockbuster. Things are about to get messy for the new public figure, Dick Grayson, but maybe he can enlist some help from his friend, Nightwing. <laughs> Nightwing has been a good book. Tom Taylor has been killing it. Check this one out. X-Men, The Trial of Magneto, the story that will shake Krakoa to its core. A horrific murder, a shocking revelation, a trial that will divide the new mutant nation. Leah Williams and Lucas Renbeck bring you a new epic that threatens the reign of X and will upend the world of mutants. The truth is hidden, the danger is far from over, and the trial has begun. All I'm saying is not guilty. Manito's my guy. <laughs> Radiant Black 7. Ah, uh, new arc has finally begun. Picking up from the shocking end of its issue 5, Radiant Black just got a whole lot more complicated. Pursued by a new enemy and not sure who to trust, will our hero escape with his life? Or is this the beginning of the end for Radiant Black? Better not be because I'm enjoying this comic. Kang the Conqueror number one. The man called Kang the Conqueror has been a pharaoh, a villain, a warlord of the spaceways, and even on rare occasions, a hero. Across all timelines, one fact seems absolute. This uh, time means nothing to Kang the Conqueror, but the truth is far more complex. Kang is caught in an endless cycle of creation and destruction dictated by time and previously unseen by any but the Conqueror himself. A cycle that could finally explain the enigma that is Kang, and a cycle that begins and ends with an old and broken Kang sending his younger self down a dark path. So for those of you who just wrapped up Loki, this is an excellent place to start. Static, Season 1, Number 3. The government believes the superpowered teenager Bank the superpowered the superpower teenage bang babies of Dakota are out of control. That's what they're calling them in the comic, the bang babies. And they're too dangerous to be allowed in the streets. When his classmate starts disappearing, Virgil Hawkins wants to do the right thing and expose what's going on. But is there any way to do so without Static getting snatched up himself? Eh, probably not, but we'll find out for sure, won't we? 
Eat the Rich, number one. What unspeakable horror eats away at the heart of Crestfell Bluffs? With law school and her whole life ahead of her, Joey plans to su- plans her summer with her boyfriend Aster in his seemingly perfect hometown of Crestfell Bluffs. It's a chance to finally meet Aster's family and childhood friends, all while enjoying a vacation with every need attended by her servants, by the servants. But beneath the affluent perfection lies a dark, deadly rot. Will Joey discover the truth before it's too late? And if she does, can she survive to tell the tale? First of all, little girl, you shouldn't be spending no whole summer with no boyfriend anyway. Where where your parents at? Hmm? No, no, you can't go. Crestville bluffs. Sound like some get out shit to me. Nope, you can't go. (laughs) And finally, we have Second Chances number one. Second Chances hotline. Call now and get a new identity. All you need is some cash, a proper referral, and a very good reason to start over. With LeBlanc, a man behind the hotline is approached by a shady figure from his past. He's forced to accept a new client who doesn't meet any of the requirements. A client with chemically induced amnesia in desperate need of protection. Up and coming writer Ricky Mamone and artist Max Berlantini. explode onto the scene with this psychedelic, action-packed, bizarre noir that feels like John Wick punching through an existential new French wave fever dream. Oof. Call a hotline, get a new identity? Yes, please. (laughs) Those are all your source wall picks. Please be sure to go to the comic book store and pick those up. In source wall news, this is the big story right here. So, DC's Robin comes out as bisexual in a new Batman comic. Tim Drake, the third Robin, to take up the mantle of uh, to take up the mantle of Robin, is now bisexual, and it's canon. Tim Tim came to the realization in Batman Urban Legends number six, the newest installment of DC's Batman anthology series. And DC has since put out an official statement on the development. Tim Drake is now the focus of the story. Some of our parts by writer Megan Fitzmartin, artist Belen Ortega, colorist Alejandro Sanchez, and letterer Pat Brosaw. This issue's concluding chapter of the story follows Robin as he rescues Bernard from nearly being sacrificed by the Chaos Monsters. They fight side by side and Tim has a light bulb moment. In his civilian persona, Tim later visits Bernard and agrees to go on a date with him. As I've said many times on this podcast, not many times, but I've said it many times enough to know. If it don't add to the story, don't add it to the story. If this makes the story better, awesome. But if this is just to serve the LGBT community, this is whack and I will call it so. So I'll give it three months to see what happens. And finally, Batman writer James Tenney IV quits Batman. The Eisner winning writer of DC's Batman ongoing series has announced his exit from the series. Tenney leaves Gotham City behind to launch a new comic book, Blue Book, with acclaimed artist Michael Avian Oming via a Substack newsletter. This wasn't an easy decision, Tenney told the New York Times. In order to invest my time in new material, I needed to choose. I could not do both. DC announced Tinian as the new Batman writer on Batman Day 2019. He's led the Batman team through a period of expansion, including a relaunch with the beginning of the the Infinite Era Frontier. Infinite Frontier Era, sorry. His run will continue through the upcoming Fear State event and end in November. While Tinian is known for DC fans of his work on Batman, he's built up a stellar catalog of creator-owned comics himself. Something is Killing the Children has been a big hit at Boom Comics with a spinoff series and Netflix adaptation in the works. Mmm. If this means we get more stuff from him and we get a Netflix series of Killing Children, oh my god. Yo, the leaving Batman's good decision. That's all I can say. Let's watch this. Watch this, yo. Thunder. Lannister always pays his debts. Whoa, dude. I am the villain of the story. All right, peeps. The CW's Power Girls, Powerpuff Girls live action series has lost its blossom. 
Chloe Bennett, who is set to play the grown-up version of Blossom, has departed the series according to Variety. The series, tentatively titled Power Puff, was set to follow Bennett's Blossom and her two sisters as adults, who return to crime fighting after trying to leave their childhoods behind them. The report states that Dove Cameron and Yana Peralt are still attached to play Bubbles and Buttercup, respectively. Other cast members include Donald Faison as Professor Drake Utonium, are currently in talks to remain with the series. Well, I guess that's just the only thing now to, 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 to uh, discuss. Who's going to replace Chloe Bennett as Blossom? I guess we will find out soon. This show may not see the light of day until next year if everyone else sticks around, but we'll see. Cruella 2, Emma Stone, closes a new deal to reprise her role as Disney's fashionable villain. Emma Stone will once again star as Disney's most fashionable villain in Cruella 2. Deadline reports that Disney has closed a deal with Stone to reprise her role as Cruella DeVille in the sequel. Her new deal follows a successful debut that saw Cruella release simultaneously in theaters and throughout the Disney Plus Premier Access service. With Disney moving ahead with the sequel, the main question is where the series will take Cruella next. Is this point where she starts sinking poor pups and cutting them into coats? We shall see. My Hero Academia movie will be helmed by a director making his English film debut. So, the live-action hero adaption of My Hero Academia, announced back in 2018, officially has its director. Shinsuke Nato will make his English film debut with the superhero-based and wildly popular manga and anime franchise. That's reported by The Hollywood Reporter. Naito is known for his live-action adaptations of other popular and cult hit animes and mangas, including Inuyasha, I Am Hero, 2018's Bleach, and Netflix's Alice in Borderland series. Naito also directed two Japanese live-action adaptations of Death Note franchise, as well as three live-action Gantz films. Netflix's Alice in Borderland currently sits at an an admirable 80% on Rotten Tomatoes. The film reportedly still has no writer, though uh, Legendary, the production studio behind Godzilla vs. Kong, Detective Pikachu, Jurassic World, is set to produce, with Toho distributing in Japan. Well, we'll see. I mean, it's a live-action My Hero movie. I'm down. I mean, the casting needs to be perfect, though. The casting needs to be perfect. Who would be in that movie? Hmm. Anyway, moving on. Wednesday. Catherine Zeta-Jones will play Morticia in Tim Burton's Adams Family spinoff. So, we have the new show Wednesday coming, and now Catherine Zeta-Jones will be portraying as Patric- Morticia, Morticia Adams. Wow, why couldn't I say that just now? Catherine Zeta-Jones will portray Morticia Adams. She will star alongside Louise Guzman, who is portraying the debonair Gomez. And, of course, Jenna, Jenna Ortega, who is appearing as the uh, main character Wednesday in the live-action series. Well, I got a little more excited to see this now. I think I'm going to check it out this time. Can't wait to see who plays Pugsley, maybe even uh, Lurch. Yo, they should get um, the great Kylie to play Merch. You know, Lurch, since he was like a, such a horrible wrestler, maybe he's a better actor. <laughs> I kid. Not really. Anyway. <laughs> Avatar The Last Airbender has found its cast and creative team. So, three years since Netflix announced its plans for a live action adaptation, The Last Airbender, the streaming giant, has finally revealed the core cast and creative team that will bring Nickelodeon's acclaimed series to life. The series is going to star, star Gordon Cormier as Aang. We have Kaiwen Teo as Katara, Ian Ousley as Soka, Dallas Liu as Zuko. With the Avatar Last Airbender creators Michael Dante Diamarto and Brian Cotenzo no longer involved in the series due to creative differences, Albert Kim from Sleepy Hollow and Nikita will serve as showrunner and executive producer alongside executive producers Dan Lin from the Lego Movie, Lindsay Libertor from Walker, and Michael Goy from Swamp Thing. Not a bad list of showrunners and producers cast looks amazing they look of age you know so uh yeah we're definitely gonna be here for this one DYSG can't wait for that premiere on Netflix let's hop into film life peace love and video games that's all like Donkey Kong yeah. <laughs> 
That man is playing Galaga. Okay, gamers, something real quick for y'all. Grand Theft Auto Remastered Trilogy is in the works, including Switch. Now, a new report claims that a Grand Theft Auto Remastered Trilogy is on the way from multiple platforms, including Nintendo Switch, and it's reportedly due out this fall. The news comes by way of Kotaku, which reports that it has learned from sources at Rockstar Games in remastering GTA 3, Vice City, and San Andreas, and that each game will be remastered in Unreal Engine. They will feature a mix of new and old graphics, the report leads. According to the report, Rockstar Scottish branch Rockstar Dundee is leading the project and also working with wider Rockstar company to develop the PlayStation PS5 and Xbox Series XS ports for GTA 5 scheduled for later this year. Rumors of such a remastered trilogy have been around for years and they have gained even more traction when Rockstar began using DMCA takedowns to remove fan remasters. Elsewhere in the report, Kotaku says these remasters were originally going to become packaged with next-gen ports for GTA 5 and GTA Online as a bonus, but plans changed and the trilogy was converted into its own standalone package, set to be released earlier this year. Now the remastered trilogy is, is due out this fall, around October or early November according to Kotaku. The trilogy will be released on Xbox Series 1, Xbox Series SX, PS4, PS5, PC, Stadia, mobile devices, and on Switch. So hopefully that rumor is true. Definitely I would love to play a remastered version of, G of GTA 3. I mean, GTA 3 was, oh my god, it was game changing, it was life changing. So I would definitely love to do that. Alright you nerds, let's mark out. So what you gonna do? And for our final piece of news for you wrestling smarks out there, Keith Lee reveals the reason behind his WWE absence. So Keith Lee was absent from WWE on and off over the past seven months. And finally, the former NXT champion revealed the reasons of his lengthy absence. Lee stated on Twitter that he's going to tell a story and that he finally followed that up with a video as promised. Noted in the video, he was pulled away from a match back in January because he had contracted COVID-19. And it was the reason why fellow WWE star and fiance Mia Yim later tested positive because she refused to leave his side. Lee then went on to reveal that after his match against Matt Riddle on February 8th, he received a phone call from WWE that told him that he had inflammation in his blood, which later turned out to be in his heart. The star was then prevented from working out or training with WWE because one wrong move could have proved fatal. The illness combined to keep Keith Lee off TV for the best part of the year and also cost Yim her chance to be in the Women's Royal Rumble. Lee noted that he has been through some tough times in recent months, but it has been he's been able to overcome this and now could be set up to make an impact in WWE. I am just glad the man is okay. Keith Lee is one of my favorites for many reasons. If you've seen him in the ring, it's for obvious reasons. Um, definitely shout out to, to Mia Yim for sticking by her man. I know people were trying to blame her for his absence, but y'all are trash for that. And hopefully the both of them can get their careers back on track and get some steam rolling. Hopefully we get Mia Yim out of that god-awful gimmick that she was with, with the, uh, I don't even remember the name of the group now. But get back to being the HBIC and get back to being Limitless Keith Lee. We miss you and we're glad you're back. And that's the podcast, y'all. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Thank you all for listening. Please, please be sure to subscribe to this podcast. Listen to the podcast. Comment on the podcast. Let your boy know what you think about this podcast. Visit the website, doyouspeakgeek.com. Follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Check out our YouTube channel. Be sure to like and subscribe there. As always, people, live to play. Play to win, win to live. I speak geek. Do you speak geek?